Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Pathfinder's Abomination Vaults, second edition. We are in book one, and we had last week crit cards galore. Bless you, Spiegler, suffering the deafness, permanent deafness. And I reached out to our resident rules lawyer that helps me in Age of Ashes, Joe Gibson, and he's like, nope, they're screwed. No, really, Joe, help me out here. He's like, oh, sixth level healing. That's that's a lot of money. So I did find a solution. All is not bleak, but we're going to play it out. So as you guys head back into town, what uh, what's the first thing on your mind? What are we going to do with this big, tall dude? Like, he can't hear us. All he wants to do is follow us around. We don't even know if he's paying attention. Hey, hey can you guys tell uh, Ian Yasmara to get some lobster ready for me? I'm almost, uh, we're almost back to town. <laughs> Need to get him fixed up. <laughs> but he's not even paying any attention. I'm going to poke him with my staff. I'm going to knock him no? in the shins. Uh, okay. How about no poking him? You might anger him. Ah, and I'm just going to make faces at him. <laughs> what are you doing? Obvi you goofy, goofy obviously, a, a dwarven uh, mating ritual. You better keep your distance. So, <laughs> um, what is what do you guys do? There are taverns, worksmiths, cleric, archive. I mean, technically, uh, Cognual has been living in town for two years now. I've lived in my town for like 20 odd years and there's stuff popping up that I had no idea was right around the corner. So I'm not going to say, you know, every nook and cranny, but uh, we're assuming that Cognol is sort of at our dusk walking elf champion and our dwarven monks sort of um, mercy. We could, uh, we could also go ask Kilino, the market proprietor. Cause I am a, uh... you go see his buddy. Uh, he like I'm his buddy. Like I know him because I've also been spending some time in, in the town for the past little while running errands for, buddy uh, Keelino. Okay. So do you know where first folks? You know where the market first is. First folks, we got to decide: do we have the cash to fix this dude? Well, I was gonna say, does Ren possibly have any way of doing this spell to help him? Because I'm friends with her. Let's go find out. Or let's go to... So you guys get... I say we go see Kilino. <laughs> you guys get, like, to a corner, and he keeps going to the market, and you guys left to go see the star girl. Because <laughs> obviously, the communication, there's a breakdown, you know? <laughs> um, so heading to the market, okay, and heading to... You guys could split up. You know, one could go with him, and one could go see her, and you guys can possibly, you know, meet back, you know? Or one of you could drag me... In to Ren or something, I don't know. But yeah. Well, since we have the big clout who thinks he knows where he's going, I'm just going to follow him. Oh, okay. Even though the player is secretly trying to give you consent to drag him off of character, he's... Okay, you guys just fall in line. Oh, no. You go, buddy. <laughs> no, no, you got no. this. I, Thumbs up. <laughs> I'm going with him. Okay. Sam hasn't said where Bella Luna's going yet. Oh, I see. They're going back to the splitting. I'm going to stick with my thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, so um, let's let's start with Bella Luna, who heads down to um, number twelve <laughs> on our our map here. All the colorful ta all the colorful tents and everything. The Otari Market, right alongside you guys, because technically you're going to the same place. But it's only when you get to the market. We'll zoom in a little bit here that. Um, you guys sort of veer off in different directions. So good news, you're not too far apart. And um, starting with Bella Luna, you get to see um, Rin. Now that's not R-Y-N as a popular in Japanese anime. It's W-R-I-N. Sivinx. Sivinxy? Sivinx. Yeah. <clears throat> S-I-V-I-N-X-I. Savingsay. Savingsay. Yeah, Rin. We're on a first name basis from now on, because like I can remember your name either. <laughs> you find her with a customer. She is poring over astrological charts 
and in a heated, not debate, but sort of philosophical discussion with what looks like a giant rat, a giant rat wearing clothes, a giant rat wearing clothes with a pair of eyeglasses perched on its nose, speaking accented common and not correcting, but debating what some of the glyphs on this map that he is trying to sell her and up the value for, and hence make it, you know, sound more valuable than it is. Mm -hmm. And you walk in. I'm sure, my fine furry little friend, that you know your craft, but undoubtedly, when referring to the Cosmic Caravan, and she just goes into a bunch of stuff that, you know, invokes uh, knowledge religion roles, um, would you welcome Mr. GM Rob Hammond, our Starfinder GM, our Cadaver's Cog Steampunk First Edition player, that have been working a whole bunch of stuff behind the wings for us. And you know him, of course, as Dolgan True Seeker, our paranoid uh, dwarven bard NPC from our Age of Ashes podcast. Rob Hammond, thank you for joining us tonight. And Good evening. would you describe said rad folk for us, please? Well, he's, he's not very big at all, um, but he's built solid. Like there's a wide body, short, short arms. Uh, the, his fur is gray and black. Uh, the clothes are very simple, but it looks really strange because I have a shield strapped to my back. And then I have two large pouches on either side uh, with a mace, which I'm not really hiding. I've just kind of got it resting on my shoulder because it's human sized and I'm just a little over four and a half feet tall. I'm not, I'm not very big at all. And I, as I take the glasses off my nose, I just kind of shake my head. Well, the rules of the cosmos being what they are, but this is what it's worth. Very well. I suppose I can spare. Now, any actual map generically in the core book used to be 50 gold. I'm assuming it's like 50 silver. Um, but she knows that, like, she is a stargazer, you know. Um, I will give you 10 silver for it. Take it off your hands as in condition. Could you possibly part with one of your symbols of the cosmos? We'll call it even. Hmm. She says, "Well, I do have." Like I pointed the one she's obviously probably wearing. I'm like, that is. Well, not the one around my neck, but let me see. No. Let, let me see. Oh, so... Anyway, so she drifts off and starts going through cupboards, leaving you alone, awkwardly spotting a dust walking elf champion at the door. And here's your chance to possibly interrupt, Bella Luna. I will just go over and kind of take a peek at the map that he was selling her. I, I start to put my hand up and I look way up. Hello. Hello. I take my hand away. You're interested in the map? It isn't sold yet. I'm just looking. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'll step aside and let her take a look. I mean, it's on the counter. And then I survey her. What, does she, what do you look like, now, Bella Luna? Now, now, Bartimus. She says, we are in the midst of a negotiation. It is not fair form to try to un undercut an old uh, friend and business associate by jumping old at a die hard. possible offer. Yes, I suppose. Well, I, I, well, if you can get me this, if you can get me something that keeps me much more in tune, I'm, the visions do come, but I think if I had a symbol, it would be better. Mm. Hello, Bella Luna. We here. walk the same path. She, uh, Dra goes right over top of them and just drapes it around like they're a couple like he like he bought it for her, her pretty pretty woman anyway this beautiful ornate but f like it's finely crafted but it's made of cheaper material kind of thing so it's like a beautiful wood and inlaid as opposed to like solid silver and be worth a lot of money but the craftsmanship is definitely spot on there um Bartimus, and she drapes it over your head and drips drops it right on you and going so we have a deal she says about to clasp Oh, I, I dust off my hands and I stick up my little rat hand? Yep. Of course. Excellent. So, Bella Luna, she says, coming around the desk and rolling up the parchment that she just purchased. What can I do for you? The rat does not excuse himself. He just sits down at the desk and nope. just starts... Go I just... <laughs> goes around. I just lean right on the counter. I just look. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I was just stopping in to see if you might possibly be able to assist one of my comrades who it seems has gone deaf 
when we went to explore for you. Well, being deaf could be a blessing. Doesn't have to hear all the things that are going on around him. It is not a blessing for us. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Bartimus, she says, oh, where are my manners? Bella Luna? Champion of, and she just, she purposely mumbles and does not say the pantheon or God's name that's outside of her beliefs. You know, like she just mumbled like type of thing. It's, it's, you know, of the type of thing. Um, may I introduce you to Bartimus, Oracle of the Cosmos? She says, they're like delighted. Be a little bow. Bartimus, Valentine, Nagata. You can call me Valentine. I wink at her. So, she says, about your friend with a hearing loss problem, whom might I ask should this be? And did you need a portable solution, a drinkable solution, a evening astrological solution? Maybe a drinkable solution if possible, and it's Craiga. Ah, okay. I must warn you, dear. She, she, she leans in. She says, not that I wouldn't give you an awesome down-to-earth price, but anything that is that, shall we say, convenient is possibly far more expensive for you and your friend than just visiting the... And again, she blurbs the god's name, Saren Ray, um, and the archive, you know, mm -hmm. on the other side of town. Oh well, my, look at well, myself. Hurt. What, a, what a terrible, you know, business model, she says. Like, she's literally shooing away a customer, right? I didn't think it would hurt to stop in and ask. Of course. Oh, you have business there this day, don't you, Bartholomew? Would you mind, Bella Luna? Uh, Bartimus has not arrived by... Second, would you like to... Excuse me, I, I, I know where I'm going. I'll take her there. Indeed, she says, and gives Bella Luna like a big wink, like you need to help this guy. You get lost, <laughs> like kind of thing. I'll just nod. Thank you for your assistance. My pleasure. Well, we can at least travel together. <laughs> My absolute pleasure, darling. Um, so anyway, you guys head out of the tent. Yes, I know the lady is waiting for me. I know, and I kind of put my head down just for a second, like a bit of a shake. But yeah, you guys head out of the tent, and meanwhile. Backing up time, several moments. Mr. Cognul, Mr. Kraga. You guys track down uh, Kraga's buddy. What was his name? Kilino. Kilino. And what does Mr. Kilino do for a living, do you remember? He's the proprietor for the market. Yeah. So currently, he's solving a parking problem where you have, um, remember how there's a delivery service that our elf works for? Mm -hmm. The couriers are bringing a wagon of horses and they're trying to back it in amongst the tightly packed tents. And, you know, something's broken down or knocked something over and now a vendor is complaining about cost damage and the courier's like, hey, I was, I'm just supposed to deliver these boards here. You know, it's not my fault. You know, they, I was told to back up right here. This is the place, this is the address, you know, that kind of thing. So he's arbitrating, you know, between this uh, little... Um, afternoon traffic jam so yeah i run up to i like run up to Kilino and just push the like the stupid courier out of the way and i i just start looking at him i'm like pointing at my ears i can't hear i can't hear anything where do i go what <laughs> i can't understand what you're saying stop yelling in my face he actually looks at the dwarf and just kind of like. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do you got a minute? Can we? Is there somewhere we can talk? Or are you busy? Do you need some? Do you need a hand? But you gotta tell me in like hand signs. Okay. Uh, he says, <clears throat> mm. "Well, actually, he turns around, right, and announces to these gentlemen that they can sort it out, or my big friend here will sort it out for you." And fearing damage to goods, wagon, and more tent damage, because Mr. Orc is not only yelling and shouting and waving his arms around, the guy's freaking huge. They're like, we got this, we got this, sir, so sorry. And they just back off and go back to their work. And he's like, oh, hey, that's not so bad. Uh, enduring friendships, eh? 
Oh, you just gonna leave me hanging? Huh? Huh? Uh. This is get to your death. You're, just <laughs> just, you're not answering. <laughs> All right, let's sort you out. Anyway. Oh, Mr. Noel. He says, I didn't see you standing there. He smiles looking down at the dwarf. It's all good, my friend. Just been paying attention to the parade. I see. Bonehead here got himself into trouble, and he's deaf in one ear and he can't hear out of the other. Ah, that's funny. So, uh, you want to tell me what's going on with uh, with the big guy? It's okay. No. He starts yelling at the orc. Too. It's okay. Whoa, 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 the dwarf whoa, whoa, will whoa, tell whoa, me whoa. everything. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, don't listen to Flippy McGee over here. I'm telling you, he's deaf in one ear. And he can't hear out of the other. Yeah, I laughed. At it sounds like it. No, no, it's real. The man is deaf. I laughed at the joke the first time. Yeah, okay. No, no. Okay, so why don't you no. head over to the archive? <laughs> what are you bugging me for? I have, uh, I have work to do. <laughs> all the right, all right, but I don't. I'm just gonna point at him. Okay. Point at Craig. Okay. I, I, I pull out my my uh, money satchel and I like show him how much I have and I'm like, how much you got? 35 silver pieces okay i'm like oh that drew like it up on the hill on asked face. me if i saw you to, to, to pull the 25 silver that you owe her you don't want to piss off a druid man because you got to pass through them trees to get to your you know rendezvous swamp and have you seen the new witcher movie plants are freaking dangerous man well maybe uh I don't know what you're saying to me. I'm saying the DM is. <laughs> is this enough? The, the DM is, is going to relieve you of 25 silver because you brought out your pouch. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to start pushing Craig towards the door, going, "Thanks, man." Okay. Now he <laughs> is your friend. You trust him. He will pay the druid the money you owe. Remember the 30 silver piece that was five, and we forgot, and I held you going. If it's more, I'll just shake you down for it later. Yes. I was trying to do it smoothly. <laughs> Didn't come out so smooth. So uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna continue that debt for a little longer, and then dude, you got a tab at one and the other. And it's not like this going for it as, as soon as <laughs> that was the deal, man. As soon as oh, yeah. we figured out the rule, we fix it. You know what I mean? I mean, um, you don't want me to like. I do have some items as well, though. For, we have some war hammers from the dungeon. I was hoping we could sell. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Because we're at the market, so he takes the gold. He ta Kilino takes the silver pieces, and I'm like, well, shit. And and then I remember we got some stuff, and I start pulling out this these two war hammers. Uh, were they masterwork or regular? I think they're just regular from those uh, those weird I, goblin troll dudes by the forge. Yeah, I think they were beyond masterwork. Yeah, I think they were like uh, legendary. Oh, Cor Corey, just trying to up me aside. No, Corey, honestly, I honestly <laughs> legit me think <laughs> that these things were oh yeah yeah worth a fortune and no. Um, yeah. Like couple of platinums yeah yeah a couple uh, we have a couple elixirs as well those um those mifflets well anything magic uh he would have to identify and then take that cost of paying a wizard out of them and you know type of thing so you know if you just um he's probably the end game guy you want to go to one second here so yeah, da, 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 da. Um, so you guys have those weird um what do you call it? Um, the martial melee web weaponing, the the bludgeoning uh, hammers, right? The war hammers. Okay, so these would sell at the market for like brand new would sell for ten silver, right? Now because of their origin, like exotic, maybe get more, or the fact it's just not a trusted supplier because they were built by MacGyver and MacGyver, less. Um, again, I gotta probably um, maybe Rob get Rob to look this up. Yeah, I'm making a rules lawyer already. Um, usually, selling something, you only get 50% market value because they'll make no profit unless, you know what I mean? So let us assume two warm hammers gets the party, not Kraga, but the entire party, 10 silver for two. Right? So instead of saying five is yours and four. Are they of any specific quality? No. Is there, are they in like are they in good like are they in usable condition? Yeah, they're, like, they're not. They're, are they sharp they're, and ready to go? They're not broken. They would sell for ten silver, but then they'll get half. Yeah, that's why I figured. Uh, okay, unless they're in, in high demand. No high demand. A third, maybe. Um, so anyway, Rob, uh, lie. Hang on, Spiegler. 
your background is connected to this guy. Do you get any discount or any kind of percentage edge from your background with him? Because that's usually why a character has a marketplace background is like to get goods faster. It doesn't say Super. in like the description, but we could like do a roll or something like that. Well, what what does it say? Like, what's the what's the dice I'm, angle? I'm uh, I get like the hobnobber. Yeah. Feet. Oh, from... okay. So you get a feet. Okay. So what does the actual feet give? Yeah. You? Uh, I'm still learning information through conversation. So I can gather information. Okay, so something else. Uh, half as long as normal. Yeah. Okay. So like instead of um, wandering around town blindly, like Sam finding out the best place to sell said weapon, right? In two hours, through your contact, either sell it to him or he'd say, "Ooh, I know who needs a hammer. Go to the blacksmith." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're saving time with this feat, not necessarily money. Um. However, uh, he recommends you go to the blacksmith and he'll give you you know because you're known like you know you drop his name he'll make sure that he doesn't haggle you'll get your guaranteed 50 percent because usually they'll start at like 30 and try and work so through, you know i assume you like write write down like with some charcoal or something like blacksmith you hand it to me oh i explained the dwarf you're on your own yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're holding up money and you're holding up hammer and you're going back and forth with them like yeah one or yeah, the other one yeah. or the other right anyway he takes your money all right and he takes out 25 right and then makes druid and trees and mm, bad right pay that up um so take 25 gold out of yourself speaker because like i said you're you're to the game you know as it were and i'm just saving you time instead of like going to the druid you can hand it to him because everybody's everybody knows everybody in this town right she owes him so that debt is settled. So now you're on par. So if you guys want to go to the blacksmith, at least you'll get five silver per hammer. But you don't have to do that right away. If you want money to heal yourself, then yeah, that would be a right away problem. Okay? So, for ease, uh, unless anyone wants to try to use diplomacy to influence, because even though you know him, you're asking for roles, right? Is he having a good day? Is a bad day? The two of you can still tag team him, get into some role playing with him. And not necessarily expect it for free. The dice decides. See how that works. Eh? So if you boys want to haggle with him, no. Okay. He will. All I could do is intimidate. Okay. Or use lore Otari and talk about like how close we are. Okay. And his... Well, just because you're not trained in diplomacy doesn't mean you can't try. Anyway, uh, but you do know that, like I said, the guy knows what he's talking about. He has no interest in hammers today. We have no bananas. Off you go to the, you know. The blacksmith, okay? Yeah. Okay, so you guys are on your way to the blacksmith, and you cross across the market to do so, and you run into your elf, who is toting along this... What are you wearing? Unmute, and then tell us what you're wearing. I'm going to fix that shortcut. Uh, just wearing um, a gray and black cloak. Like, it's gray with black border, hooded. Uh, underneath a uh, simple doublet, uh, leather pants, boots. And as I said, I've got a large pouch on either side yep. that I kind of keep to the front so I can reach my hands into them. I've got a metal shield on my back, and I'm carrying a human-sized mace across my shoulders. And chattering away, too, like, oh, look at this. And like, every time I see something, I will comment on it. I've been doing oh, that to Bella Luna since we started walking. That's cool. So you're doing, you got the big mace across your shoulders, like you're carrying the yep. waterboard, the, the water pole, right? Da, da, da. Okay. Yeah. Because, like I said, I'm just under four and a half feet tall. All right. Uh, my fur is uh, black and gray as well. Okay. So up roll these two. And they are. A dwarf and an orc. I know. it's. It, there's no tavern. There's no joke here, but it's still curious. I kind of stop when I see <laughs> the orc. Like, I just, I, I looked at, I look at both of them with like this worried look on my face and I'm holding this war hammer in one hand and a bag of silver in the other. And I'm looking at Bella Luna and I'm like shaking my head. And then I'm like, blacksmith, blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> He is a full orc. He's not a half orc. You know, maybe he's uh, new to the adventure. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's he's speaking fluent common. Yeah. But uh... I kind of cocked my head at that. Okay. I'll just... Are these your friends? Yes, they are. Fair enough. I don't friends. Of, friends. I take a I take, I, I I take a deep bow and introduce myself. My name is Bartolomeo Valentine Magado. You can call me Valentine. A quick nod. 
Friends is such a strong word. The orc right now can't hear you. So if I tell him he's any number of bad things, can he read lips? He might be able to. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> then I shall keep my thoughts to myself until I know him better. And I smile at the orc, big, big, juicy grin. And I have sharp rat teeth the whole nine yards. I know. We don't want thinking people thinking that you took that cool feet about to giant <laughs> And I thought our goblin friend no. was ugly. I don't have... <laughs> ugly? I point at me... Me? Well, you call no, those no, anyway. fangs? Look at these. Nope. I just looked at him and said, he can't hear anyway. Well, he's, he's not at a line since he saw you big teethy grin. And then, you know, he's, he's, he's a, he's a tooth yeah. guy. Um, however, there is like passerby that start patting him on the arc going, yes, blacksmith that way. Shut up that way. Like, cause he's still bah, bah, bah. You know, like passerby like, yes, or Mr. Orc over there, blacksmith over there pointing, you know, because everyone can hear the orc in the middle of the marketplace. Is there a road sign somewhere that says blacksmith? Uh, <laughs> no. It's probably here in the marketplace. Usually there'd be a sign or something point. Well, there, you, nice you, you guys are in a marketplace. It's all tents. It's a pop-up marketplace. Yeah. So it's a bit of... I look for the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that would indicate where the blacksmith was. Yep. Uh, Cognual Dwarf, did you just keep on walking? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... I continue on over to the blacksmith. Okay. Oh, I, I've been standing there, you know, quietly leaning on my staff. Okay. Just watching the, you know, whatever. And I'm going to poke Craig in the shins again and go, come on, bonehead. And uh, we'll head over towards the, the blacksmith. Oh. And while I'm on the way, I'm going to go, Luna, you bringing the rat dude with you? Are you okay with a slight detour? I just give a big smile and, of course, we'll end up there eventually. I have to get there. I just can't say I'm excited to go. (laughs) Well, um, Cognul, do you want to explain that you need capital? Hence, our blacksmith-obsessed hammer-carrying orc will equal money, which will equal heading off to the temple eventually. Well, we're just going to head in our direction, and as we're wandering away, I'm going to, you know, motion to... I'm excited because I can look you in the eye. I mean, it doesn't have enough for me. <laughs> what do you mean, our goblin? <laughs> you got to look down on him. <laughs> I'm uh, going to, you know, nod to Barnabas and go, uh, Fogno, my pleasure. Oh, most definitely. And we'll just carry on our way and maybe make some conversation. What brings you can always stop down. for a cake over there if you're really not in that much of a hurry. I mean, him hearing can be changed any time whatsoever, or possibly oh. a glass of water. Let's let's no. not go there. Let's get the guy some hearing because if we don't, he's going to drive us crazy. Fair enough. Okay. So we'll just you know just make some small talk. You know what brings you to town? Yeah. Are you ships in the just, night you know, where you guys or are you guys towing the line and everyone goes off to the blacksmith, right? Yes. Well, okay. I, I just think she's she's awesome looking at a dark elf. I'm like, yeah, I'll follow that around. Okay. D- Dustwalker elf. Yes, the cosmos sent me here. <laughs> sure they did. <laughs> I've seen pictures of them all in the d- dark recesses of my mind. I'm sure I have. How did you miss the deaf and dark, really? Oh, it's a sign, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. He's standing right. I just he's, he's standing right on that sign that says baked goods. That's what t- caught your attention with the cake. But okay, that's uh, what he is. Oh. He's baked goods. <laughs> Makes sense now. You guys get all <laughs> nicknames based on marketplace signs. Watch out! Off to the blacksmith you go. Okay, picture the scene. Here's a blacksmith. You know, quietly leaning. Got a little time in his hands. You know, just waiting for someone in the back to fill an order. Talking, chewing the fat with a local having a pleasant conversation with a fellow commoner and in busts a loudly protruding orc, a quietly eye rolling champion elf, a side grinning for someone who doesn't say much carries a lot of presence. Cause you don't know if you're going to arm wrestle or break your furniture monk and this darting everywhere eyes and talking to everything and everyone like he already knows them rat folk all come in and start talking or explaining why he's yelling at once okay and just to shut you guys up 
He pushes 10 silver across the table after you guys go through this big rigmarole, takes the hammers, and, and just points at the door. Just so we get back to his conversation with, with Jimmy the Lumberjack. <laughs> but hey, your marketplace contact didn't lie. He gave you fair price, 50%, get the hell out of the shop, takes the hammers, gone. So, Is there any chance for a little more than that? It seems that you're, I don't see many of these in, in your shop. Could we possibly get another cup of silver? And who might you be? My name is Bartholomew Valentine. I'm new here, but I have an eye for certain things. Did you pick up the money, Cargo? And I know. No. Money's still on the counter. Kraga, did you pick up the money? He smiled, nodded at you without you hearing a thing, took the hammers, put the money right to the edge of the counter. Do you pick it up? You're, you're deaf, Same not enough. mute. <laughs> I felt yes. I will. You like Bar Bartimus's scale. hand touched my wrist as I was about to pick it up. Okay, so yep, I just yeah, the dwarf nudges yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and I said I'll use my diplomacy. As I said, I mean okay. we're traveling through these parts and we're trying to help everyone around here. It doesn't pay to take more. So we need a little more silver for our friend. Do you know? So could you possibly see us another five? Would, and, would it be safe to assume, Jeff, that maybe I might have a connection here? Since I've been around for a while, possibly. Like I said, you can you can jump on the eight another diplomacy train. Yeah. And Oops. also, kind sir, I would also guarantee anything unique we find, we would give you first option to buy. Considering I'm the only blacksmith in town, that's very generous. There are other people who will buy it, and I I know I motion to, just like he should know what the symbol on that I'm wearing means. Uh -huh. I point to it, and I will roll my diplomacy now. Okay, Bella Luna, this uh, this guy with you and your party. He going into the, we is, are together is, and he's going to go into the swamp with you i don't know about that yet mm. but i got a 15 okay but i'm pretty personable yeah yeah oh yeah yeah well no trust me this this me instead of just booting you guys out turning to someone for confirmation that's him totally warming up to you <laughs> at least 15 a much uh cognul can i have uh, your say in the matter and a diplomacy role to influence Oh, I got a 15. Oh, well. that was Cognol. Sorry. Okay. What about... Um... Oh, did mine not show? Hold on. No, oh, no, yeah. it did not. Well, uh, did you see a 15 as well? I must have read hit at the same time as his. Oh, you clicked and you saw the first thing that popped up. There it is. How about a 23? So... I am suave as hell. Like 24 with his help. Uh, you know, the new... Um, the new eight and other is not 10. It's actually starts at 15. It might be as high as 20, but it is a success. So as I was saying, Bella Luna, this stylish, handsome, pearly white toothed rat person, bow, bow, bow is with you and your party and is foolish enough to go. Now he's like trying to talk the rat in out of joining you because <laughs> he likes him so much all of a sudden, right? <laughs> Going into that dredged swamp where be shamed to like dirty those nice clothes. Nice shield, by the way. You know, how much you want for the shield? Oh, I, I, I can't talk for the shield. Um, all right. Well, anyway. As you can see, my, my diminutive stature, every now and then I need something to hide behind. And I don't like to use people. I'll, uh... What about you, Cognul? You vouch for this guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. I smile. Absolutely. That's worth an aid and other. <laughs> I forgot to ask the dwarf for his role doesn't count. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I could spare three. Maybe you missed the hammer section. Any, like, beyond the shovels you can't see from your short stature, you know? But politely... He does have hammers in here, after all, and he'll spot you an extra three silver for a total of What's 13. The Remind me of the gentleman's name. The, um... The blacksmith. I was pointly uh, uh, avoiding it. Thanks for that. Mm. <laughs> He's the blacksmith. Okay. You don't do know. I you know don't know. Later <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. Yes, so, you do. do. Do I know him? Yeah. Uh, okay, so... I can look it up. I, 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 that's okay. You don't have Chad to Chad Gusterson. But, I, but if I know him, I I'm just going to motion, you know, step down the counter a little bit, and you know, move a few steps, and I'm going to go. How about we split the difference at four? Uh, technically, splitting the difference actually is uh, is um, 
is three. His name is Vol. Vol Rajini. Rajani. Vol. Mm. We've done a lot of business in the last couple of years. Have we? We'll bring you everything that we've got. I don't know. The show's only been running for a couple of months. I wouldn't say years. And there's all those weeks yeah. we've missed. Well, let's just uh, say yeah, making a friend now is much, much better than making a friend later. Uh, well, you know, I've been around for a while. Okay, well, the dice are cast, so to speak, Mr. 15. So, like, I, I appreciate the extra nudge-nudge, but really, three's the best I can do because since that damn light in the lighthouse been acting up, people are, let's just say they're not running around hoarding and buying weapons and black, you know, that type of thing, waiting for an apocalypse. They're more concerned with um, carpentry goods and... You know, like lumber and stuff, boarding up windows and things. I uh, I turned to Bartimus and I'm like, thumbs up. And I'm like, thank you, rat man. I can't wait to learn your name when I get my hearing back. I will say, I will say, Kragna, that, you know, the little rat hand comes out, stops you. And there's a bunch of me, 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 nah, 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 nah. And the guy thinks about it, talks to the dwarf, confirms the bell, Luna, and then shoves three more on the silver. And now there are glistening 13 silver. Let's not let yeah, them get cold. He immediately goes like <laughs> to the top of my books. <laughs> You're my favorite blacksmith in the entire town. I'm the only blacksmith in it. What are you people talking about? No, I mean Bartimus because I, I. Oh, okay. I, I, I you can't shut up pat me on the head, right? Yeah. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I bow. Like, I understand what you're doing. I'm like, I nod yeah, yeah, most yeah. of the coinage. Like, yeah, yeah. Anything I can and, do to help. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um, it's 13 silver. Uh, now. The orc has paid his debt to previous healing. So, do you guys have like a party money, or is this all all cash goes through Kraga because he's the least likely to get robbed? Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, party hammers, party money, thirteen for the party, not necessarily for the orc, unless you just want him to hold it because he's the biggest problem right now. Well, we do need him to get healed, so all money's going to go towards that at the moment. Fine. So for argument's sake, so we don't lose track of it, Kraga, put 13, you took 25 off your guy, take 13 back. And now where do you guys want to go? Because like the dwarf and Vol are still in it. They're like way down the counter and there's, there's, there's no, just totally like dwarven style, just relentlessly chipping away at this guy. You know, and the guy's like, no, 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 it's killing me. No one's buying weapons. Everyone's buying like carpentry hammers and stuff, man. It's like, you know, 13 the best hey, I can no. do. Where did uh, where did Kilino say we gotta go? Cogno. He, uh, he said you had to come here. Sell the hammers. Yes, he sent us here. <laughs> but first, we asked him where I could get it. He where I could get my hearing healed, right? And then he told Cogno that. And then I had the idea to bring up the hammers. Oh, yeah. And then he, he told it. Yeah, yeah, he did wave at the archive, you know, the library slash. It's okay center. if you forget, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I absolutely forget. <laughs> it's uh, the archive, is what you said? Yeah, the, the Church of Serenre, the library that doubles as an archive for the city. Yeah, this beautiful voice in your head, Cognol, just tells you and you remember. Yes, I think we need to go to the archives. That is where Ren suggested. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So, um, heading to the archives. All right, I'll follow you guys. Let me back out of my map. And number 18, the three blue structures off to the bottom left, to the west, southwest, right on the ocean. And the winding path that goes straight up a cliff to a graveyard, that is the Dawnflower Street that takes you to the Dawnflower Archives. It's a lovely place. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. The Dawnflower Library, that is so aptly named. You guys are greeted by a familiar young acolyte. Very nervous, blonde, half-elf who brings you inside and asks what you guys all want and takes you to the appropriate, you know, starting with our orc. Okay, needs healing. Okay, uh, right right, over, right this way. And I'd like to be with you. Me uh, no here. Me no here. 
Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, of course. No. And, and he turns to his side to like no one goes, yes, darling. I was just getting to that. Um, I understand the man is deaf. Um, anyway, I can help you. And sorry, the rest, are you all need of aid or do you want to see the library? Like he addresses you all. Like uh, you're I, I, I take customers. my hood down. Yeah. Take my hood down. So I believe Yasmira is waiting for me. Yasmira. Oh, sheepishly. I'm like, mm. It's the first time I've quit talking. I was like, yeah, I gotta open up to my test now. Do you, do you mean the lady that's always at the crook's nook by the bridge? Well, I thought she was here. Uh, I've not seen. Uh, I was told I could meet her here. I'm sorry. She hasn't been in today. Hmm, then I'll wait. Put my hood back up. Okay. Seems a little uh, <laughs> nervous now that he's dropped the rogue guildmaster's lobster chef you know entrepreneur its name supposed to meet him at the temple <clears throat> hmm uh and the dwarf just actually um just so you know i was trying to see if my mentioning the name got a rise out of the others i know where she is but i'm trying oh to yeah see yeah no i totally did i'm like i'm just playing into it dude yeah i just so i look at the others after i say that do they react at all when i say her name oh, the orc might just well actually the orc doesn't hear you oh shit the orc's deaf right yeah i'm not gonna help Oh, well. yeah, the other the other two are stone cold. Fire and miss. As soon as this guy gets ears, he has to start. You see, Yasmiri starts salivating about a lobster. And it, it, you know, it's, the other two are stone cold, man. All right, fair enough. Uh, but he does ask you what everyone wants individually. If you all claim that you're just here to heal our orc, then they, he asks the three of you to wait, and he takes our orc into the back to see acolytes, and you guys, you know, can ask about the library and such and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, you learn through paper, parchment, or, you know, you start putting out silver, you know, and you, you have like seven and they're like, yeah, times 10 with their hands. Like, you know, it will cost 70 silver pieces for them to cast and ask Saren Ray to restore your senses. Do you have so yeah? 70. I just I, I just <laughs> empty my whole pouch, yeah. twenty three pieces, twenty three silver pieces. Okay, and then yeah, you like sign to us like how much more we need. So the to you need a you need, you need a total of seventy. So yeah, so we need forty seven more silver pieces. Yep. Hello, Luna Cognol. Okay, I take it you're adventurous. That is correct in a way. Fair enough. I'm a child of the cosmos, and I'd be willing to loan what little money I do have to your cause if I could accompany you for a while. I don't have an issue with you joining us, Cognul. Cognul, dudes wants to buy into the party. A tear forms in the dwarf's corner of his eye, but other than that, he says. Acceptable. Well, I add my 32 silver pieces to the pile. And I do have eight. You guys ever see um, spaghetti meatballs and there's the security guard? Get back in there, tear. You know, I'm a tough guy. Just, the man wants to pay to hang out with you, Cognol. It's a dwarven dream, buddy. <laughs> it's a little tear. <laughs> Suck it back in. Okay. So 23 from Cog from Kraga. Another eight from our elf. And I've got 32. I figured it out already. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let me. We need seven more. Let me, see, let me get. Let me get to my acubus over here. And uh, <clears throat> twenty-three plus eight plus how much do you have, uh, Barty? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. And Mister Cognul, can you spare us seven? I will. I will kick in the seven. Okay. Please take them off your characters immediately. More bad news. I just mentioned I, money comes and goes. Yep. Use it where it's needed. More bad news. Good news for Rob. We're actually using the XP uh, system for this, Rob, not Milestone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, bad news. I had been doing it terribly wrong. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> you do not have what you know, I don't think you have either number. I have to redo. But I'm just saying, I finally got it figured with some help from Matt and Joe, and I had a, made an assumption about a chart. And it was just one of those out of the mouth of babes. It's like, oh, wait a minute. So, yeah, I got it now. I'll do the math. You guys are not second level. Sorry. Not even halfway. But we'll have those numbers to you before next week. But moving on. So you guys drain the coffers. 
Just out of curiosity, how much silver, if you don't mind me asking, do you have left on you, each person? Or if this made everyone broke? Absolutely none. I'm broke. Broke. <laughs> I love our private Zoom chat. Spiegler's filling it with, yay! Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> you really thought we were going to make you run around with a negative two perception like oh, sorry buddy don't pull credit cards <laughs> sucker all right 64 you have what 64 still mm -hmm. what about paying for, unless... paying for your kit and all that stuff well unless I'm... you did the sheets oh you know what <laughs> what what is your gear value like did you have 150 a minute ago no, I did not. Oh, okay. I had 71. Okay. Uh, but let me just hold on. No, that's means you got second rate gear. That's all that. No, is. he's a monk. He hardly has any gear. Uh, yeah, I was going to say he wears pants. Right? Yeah, but there's uh, he wears pants, right? We hope so. Um, it's all he would. His, um, uh, is, his gear is like a platinum, three gold, three silver. Like his everything he carries is dirt cheap because it's all utility gear. So, yeah, no, mm -hmm. that's legit. All right. Mr. Moneybags here. Feel so sorry for all of you. <laughs> All flat broke. I, I I was surprised when I looked to have seventy one. No, no, it's yeah, it's it's but, legit. At, at a glance, I'm just looking over your gear. It's all good. Okay. Good thing we got the dwarf friend to pay all our debts. Yeah. Well, you come into the back, and they they tell the young cleric that he should you know he should have a go at healing to see if he's come around. So it's kind of like an intern. No, uh, a young med student. Uh, hmm, he seems very unsure about his skill with Saren Ray. However, he does, after the other clerics and Archivist urging, sit you down on a chair so that your like shoulders are at like head level with him because he's just a slender little half elf and you're huge, right? And um, he, uh, you know, starts pulling quarters. I mean, silver from your ears until you pay the seventy. Ah. That money's gone. Nice little trick. Hey, eh, ta-da. I used to do parties now. Okay. And then you see him throw his head back and, you know, mutter the word, but you don't hear anything, right? Uh, his voice must be like when he throws into it and actually prays, must be beautiful, songstress, majestic. Unfortunately, you missed it. Though I must say, even the Dusk Elf, you know, is God smacked, jaw open, and, and again, shedding a tear. It was so beautiful. Most beautiful prayer you guys have ever heard in your life. And then suddenly, there is that ringing in your ears. And ringing in your ears means you can hear something. And then there's that sort of fade back in, you know, where uh, everyone's asking, did it, did, it, did it work? And, and uh, Echo, yeah. echo. How do you feel? The young man asks you. Oh, I heard that. Excellent. It seems Saren Ray has answered our prayers. Puts puts a hand on your shoulder and says, I am so glad that I could help you. And that Saren oh, Ray... Get, get away from me. I mean, the magic, all of it, this is making me feel sick. I need to get out of here, but thank you. <laughs> Thank you, but I gotta get out of here. I, this is too much. Well, that's awesome. So he just runs for the door. So the guy, the guy could pound back tubs of gone off lobster for the record, you know, in a CD bar. But you know, one one chummy touch from a golden boy half elf and the whole library and smell of books and everything, and the guy just runs out the door. That's awesome. All right. Well, he can hear. It's a miracle, and he can run. Look at him go. What do you guys want to do? Thank the uh, half elf for his aid. You're welcome. Um, I'm sorry. Um, if I did I not introduce myself, my name is Brother Davros. I believe we met Brother Davros. at the Druid Circle. I believe. I believe so. Yes. I, I, uh, I cameoed in Clinton's Core Classics and have popped up in Dice Before Dishonor a few times formerly a cast member, now an NPC. I don't think the GM really knows what to do with me. He just keeps calling upon me because he's got this voice down. You know how it is. And, uh, you know, you guys go on your way? 
Yes. He's kissing your hand and, and like holding the wrist. He's very schmoozy, right? Very, very charming little half elf when he starts, you know. And then he looks beside him like someone's yelling at him and he just drops your hand like, oh, sorry. Yes, dear. <clears throat> Strange fellow. So, um, hey, you know what? We can not only can Cognil here, Kraga, but the whole town because, you know, there's that running and yelling. <laughs> there's the echo right off the... Um, the uh cliff you know yay thank you i can <laughs> hear clearly now yeah go man go you got this <laughs> the, i can hear clearly <laughs> now. the pain is oh, going an actual or uh, sound <laughs> yeah. oh you sound majestic to yourself the the, the the town's like oh we're being invaded that's a war cry you just like the sound of your voice just your voice you're like i got yeah. my voice back yeah the villagers begin to run yeah. oh, oh it's just crag again never mind yeah, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be abroad in the swamp fixing our problems? Okay, so a little time passes by, and you guys find yourself, funny enough, in all places, at the Crook's Nook, where um, you guys fill up on what? Water? Breadcrumbs? You're broke. <laughs> Hognul's not. He can fork out a little to get us something to drink. <laughs> That's what you get for jingling when you walk, dude. By the way, I owe you all. I will. I promise I will get you back. Don't you worry. Just stick together. We'll we'll get through that swamp, and I promise I will get you all back. Swamp? I love how he says get you. I have no idea where we're going, but sounds good to me. He says get you back and not pay you back. I'll get you back. You know, just don't sleep. And you'll, you know, <laughs> 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 let's say pay you back. Just, just pointing that out, you know, orca mentality. Well done, Speak. Sorry, go ahead, guys. <laughs> so, how does it fall on me to buy the drinks? Because you're the party den mother? Because you're friendly and kind and want Papa to Cognul. Because st uh, start lottery will get you everywhere. Starving meat shields don't <laughs> hold up against the hordes of right. <laughs> you do the best backflip I have ever seen. Oh, oh, oh wow. listen oh, to this. Dude. Well done. Praise me more. Let's, okay. So <laughs> scene fades. Sorry, Bartimus. Uh, what was that? Uh, I heard you I actually heard your voice for once. <laughs> Yes, reintroductions by all means. Oh, it's good that you can hear me now. As I said, my name is Bartimus Valentine Magato. You can call me Valentine Bartimus. And he right he on. will sound better next week when we get his microphone fixed, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> A pleasure to meet you, my little Valentine. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, did you, I take a half step back, but I give... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way he said it. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I need a drink. Role play amongst yourselves. Don't don't forget we're live. I need a drink. That's got to come out of me some other way. Uh, we actually made it to the bar, correct? Yes, we have. Perfect. So in the process, I will flag down a waitress. Round of drinks for my friends. Thank you, Cognul. Thank you, Cognul. I'm so well, friends, we are now for a good long time, and I sit up, uh, pull up a chair. Cheers to Valentine joining the party. Everybody can clink glasses. Can mm -hmm. the glass. <laughs> Huge. Oh, don't mind my size. I was small amongst my tribe. Oh, average amongst my tribe. But these <laughs> tusks, ah, no one had bigger tusks than these babies. Ah, fair enough. There's always a mark tried. So, Valentine, why did you decide you wanted to go with us? Now, I get a little quiet when you say that I kind of look around and I put a hand on the symbol. Well, I kind of go where the cosmos directs me. And uh, you, all stuck out. you all stood out to me. Therefore, it's in my best interest to travel with you. I have certain skills. I know a few secrets of the way the universe works. Then I smile. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad you decided to join us. A drifter like you must have some fine stories. Well, I can tell you stories of where I came from, or where I'm going. 
but it's much more fun to tell stories about where we're going. We're making them up as we go along. When you look out there, there's so many options given to us. And I said, he, I, if you don't stop me, I will continue to pr- proliferate pr- about pr- the on. Cosmos. So the scene pulls back out from you guys trotting along, making hedges bets. Are you going to spend the night before you head back into the swamp tomorrow? Do you want to head in the swamp tonight? Hey, nothing like a little night uh, under the stars, you know? Might find completely different monsters. Or <laughs> completely different dangers. You guys want to bed down? What is the plan to head back now that we've gained a number? No plan. We're just, we all retire. I think a night's rest would be good. Yeah, I think your idea of panning out and us just kind of listening to uh, Valentine prattle on. And oh, we're not into then, the show here. I'm panning out, but I'm asking that, like panning out from the characters, but I would like to know. Oh, the no, I don't, yeah, I don't mean the show. Yeah. I just mean, yeah, and then we'll go to the next morning. Okay. I wake up and I can hear the birds chirping and I'm like, okay. oh, that sound. But before we do, <laughs> I'd like to come the scene back down to Rin by herself, gazing up into the night sky that evening while the party slumbers vistfully. And she's looking, funny enough, comparing one of her astrological charts with the very one she just purchased from Mr. Valentine. And she sighs to herself and looks and contemplates the cosmos, the cosmic caravan pantheon. And she says, oh, young Bartimus, you still have such a large part to play, whether it's here or far. I hope you are up to the task. I tingle like somebody walked over my grave. <laughs> he's in the middle. He's sleeping in the middle of the night. He starts shifting. And the birds chirp. And sunlight comes crashing in. And Krago wakes up at dawn. Which means you all wake up at dawn. Because Krago woke up at You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> you could be three inns away when Krago awakens. You know crashing out the shutters and eh, the whole thing uh, is never actually asleep he's just always like half awake with his meditation Boom. <laughs> Boom. that that i would buy uh there's a great scene in one of the alice Salvatore books where they he goes old school and introduces these 20th level characters that have settled down and started kingdom and he and it's a lovely homage to like first edition ad and d and the monk sits on a roof and he has a trap. He's taken fresh tiles and laid them lightly on the roof behind him, but they're loose. So if anyone tries to sneak up behind him, the tiles will slip and ninja or not, you know, you put any weight on that, they go flying down. Very simplistic idea and a very effective alarm and trap. And uh, I'm just wondering, where would a dwarven monk meditate? What's a prime location for you, sir? Looking at this map. Boulder? Possibly. Hmm. Let me just have a look. We in got, the, we're looking at the map of Otari, correct? Yeah, like we got, there's cliffs, there's out on a dock and looking over the ocean. There's, uh, you know, he just rides the log flume all night long. <laughs> <laughs> just on the sidewalk right in front of the building. The edge of the trees, uh, up in the up in the circle. What's, you know, what's a, what's a dwarven monk place here? Or is there even one available? I'm not sure that there's one available yeah. here, but nope. I would very likely, if I could find a flat top roof or something as high up, but I wouldn't want to, stra- uh, to travel far from my friends. Okay. So if I could find a balcony or a perch on the roof, somewhere where I could easily access, okay. D- then just, that's where I would be. Just, just curious, like, you know, something something nearby. All right. <laughs> And definitely with an earshot of, uh, you know, Craig is, uh welcoming the morning. Oh, absolutely. Throwing open shutters, right? And the rest of you guys get up. So a few hours later, after having your morning meal and reconvening, getting your gear together, do we plan on heading back past the Druid Circle, where Craig is actually thanked for paying back his debt? Come any time. If you don't want to come all the way down to the temple, the druids here can offer some services within their occult and primal, sorry, within their primal magic circles, because it is technically closer. And we head back up to the swamp. And we will see you next time on Monster Interrupted, the Pathfinder Abomination Vaults podcast. 
Say goodnight, Mr. Valentine. Good night, everyone. Arcane gate because we need an escape. This magic weapon refused to turn the tide. It breathes by all of its saints. Who cares if we're a disgrace? And just one shove our wizard rolled death and fell. Tell me why we brawl this thing. Too many limbs that sting. All of us play food for its spawn. Up our XP and then we'll bring new dice for the slaying. A pretty mix, blue, black, and gold. Rolling, rolling. up provoke me haste me faster dash returning churning savage attack the character so cozy buckets of dice you know me i'm a gun